Thanks very much. Can can everyone see my screen? Yep, looking great. Perfect. Well, uh, yeah. So hello to everyone from a very rainy and uh, uh, cold Glasgow morning or noontime now. Um, so today I just wanted to share with you a story of how the microbit kind of saved the day for me uh, when I was trying to introduce um, local high school students to what it means to to basically build chemist robots, right? Um, so a little bit about me, my background is in computers. So uh, I've always been really fascinated with coding, uh, always loved coding and programming computers. And then also I did my PhD in chemistry. So very unrelated, I guess, but I've always wanted to combine the two. So uh, all these years in the film hood, toiling away and doing repetitive stuff, I always wanted to kind of automate it and build a essentially a robot chemist, right? And so after my PhD, I started looking and found this group in Glasgow. That's why I'm here. Um, that basically does exactly this. So uh, the Cronin group in the University of Glasgow, a very large group, so about 60 people, uh, lots of postdocs, lots of PhD students, and a lot of a lot of funding. Um, and so um, the QR code there is if you want to check out our website. And so I, I always wanted to basically uh, take this magic of building chemists, a uh, robot chemist, and introduce it to a younger audience. Uh, and thankfully, in the kind of uh, gloomy and perhaps a little bit sad days of lockdown last year, something really amazing happened to me. And that was uh, the Royal Society of Chemistry uh, gave me some money to exactly do what I wanted. So I started this outreach project with a local high school in Glasgow um, called uh, Digital Chemistry for Digital Natives. So to, to take these this generation of digital natives have always known about the internet and phones and apps and stuff, and then uh, enabled them to kind of connect that with chemistry. So I, um, I uh, basically, the premise is like, yeah, science can feel a bit dry on its own, but you can actually just start building your own stuff that does chemistry for you and it can record your data, do all the repetitive stuff, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, so these amazing pictures were uh, drawn by uh, my former lab mate, uh, Naomi Johnson, who I had the pleasure of collaborating with on this outreach project. And so this was in the depth of lockdown. So um, I guess uh, not much could be done in person. So I kind of set up a website called 0101chem.science. The QR code is there if you want to jump to it. And started creating content on this website. Uh, so starting with like, scratch sketches that the kids could edit and then um, ask Naomi to kind of uh, show the algorithmic nature of chemistry. So how chemistry is also made of, of instructions just like in computer programs um, or basically showing how chemists can optimize a reaction by choosing like parameters like you season your food like salt and pepper. You add more salt, you add more pepper, it's too hot too salty, and then you find something that's just right. But then something amazing happened. Uh, vaccines came, and then uh, kind of we went back to almost normal life. So I managed to take one of the robot chemists in our lab and take it all the way to the high school and show the students, which I thought was amazing. Um, so so uh, I, I managed to we managed to do a little titration experiment even. But something that was a little bit bittersweet about all this was that the the, the equipment was extremely expensive. So, uh, and also you need to know, like, know the exact sort of API of all the pumps and valves that work in the system to use it. So my idea was to um, make it more accessible to the students. So I wanted to come back to the school with a new project where they could do it themselves and they could take it home. And luckily I remembered watching this video on YouTube of someone making a water pump with a microbit, just a straw and a microbit. And so basically I just went ahead and ordered 10 microbits. So, so pick 10 students, uh, bought 10 microbits and 10 tiny servo motors. And thankfully these ones don't need an actual power supply. So you can just power it over the USB that you connect to the microbit. And um, just some alligator or crocodile clips and uh, 
and some paper clips to measure a pH, do the same titration, essentially. Uh, I couldn't find any plastic straws, so I had to use some broken pens. It's, it's, uh, plastic straws have been out, outlawed in the EU now, I think. Uh, anyway, so the idea was just make a little circuit and measure the, 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 the voltage between these two. And so when you have a basic solution, it has high conductivity, but as you start titrating, adding acid to it, you get to neutral, the conductivity drops. And so when you find the lowest conductivity, that's when you've kind of finished your titration. So that was the main idea. And so we only had two hours for this session, but we managed to basically get the basics, uh, construct the kind of uh, chemistry part. So paper clips in a solution of base that you add acid to, and then use a microwave to read the conductivity essentially. Um, and it's really cool that you can see the, the reading live. Um, and then attach the servo motor. So the kids did it all themselves in groups of two, with a little bit of guidance, and then attach that sort of pen barrel to the micro, uh, to, the, to, the, to the servo, uh, to, to use for liquid transfer between the acid and base vessels. And then finally do the titration. So um, the best part about the whole thing was afterwards, I just, I just told them you can take everything home. So every kid got the whole set, the, the microwave, the motor, everything to just go crazy and do whatever they want with it afterwards. Um, so yeah, that's it uh, from me. I would like to thank the Royal Society of Chemistry for this very generous uh, funding that enabled this. I want to thank the high school that we collaborated with, Whitehall Secondary, and especially the science teacher, Sophia Malaliu, that uh, basically tirelessly worked with me uh, many, many messages of coordinating this and that. Uh, thank you, Sophia. And also uh, the inspiration we see the Digital Chemistry Group at Glasgow. So thank you very much. I'm looking forward to any questions that you have in the chat.